This is Bill Martin. I want to talk a little bit about ocean temperatures right now. There is a heat wave going on. It's been going on most of the summer, and it's not been inland. It's been at the coast. Coastal temperatures have been running 5 to 7 degrees above where they should be for this time of year. So some areas off the San Francisco coast have reached 64 degree temperature in the ocean. That is extremely warm. That is, again, 5 to 7 degrees warmer than average. This live picture, this is down at Pismo Beach, <clears throat> and it is 64 degrees in the water right now and 58 degrees air temperature. So we're seeing kind of a reverse, right? Usually the air temperature is warmer than the water, but the water is warmer than the air temperature. When the water is warm, it has a tendency to want to evaporate quickly. And the more evaporation you get, the higher the humidity or and the higher the dew point, the more moisture in the air. And the higher the dew point, the hotter it feels and the more you sweat. So I've been getting tons and tons of emails and letters and calls regarding this kind of like, why is it so humid? And yes, we have had some subtropical moisture moving in from the monsoonal um, California, the North American monsoon. That's all, that's this time of year, appropriate time of year to have this. But then you add that to these above average sea surface temperatures. And so you get these um, increased amounts of evaporation. So the GOES satellite image shows, let me move this out of the way a little bit, down in this area right here, California, you still have some fog. This is just today, kind of nondescript, beautiful clear day, not a lot of smoke. Matter of fact, some of those, the, this warmer water may have, be the reason for less smoke. Why? Well, because I think we're seeing less fires, or at least more fires being abated because of the increased dew point temperatures, right? Humid, you know how humidity can increase right in, in, or how it increases your ability to, to not have a fire start and how to how to get it out quickly so there's that now off the coast of uh, pacific northwest there's something called the pdo you're going to hear a little bit about it it is the um uh, pacific decadal oscillation it's just temperature movements it's temperature so in this area it's below average sometimes it's a warm pdo sometimes it's a cold pdo decadal decades. So every 10 years or 10 to 30 years, you get this change in water temperature out here. It's been around for a long time. The La Nina, which is forming, this is Mario, which is a tropical storm, which will drop more rain in Baja. But this area down here in the tropics, further down towards the equator, La Nina is forming. It's not there yet. It's Enso neutral right now. Um, El Nino, Southern Oscillation, neutral, meaning it's neither here nor there. But by October, it is forecast to produce lots of warm water down in these areas down here. In the meantime, we've got this very warm air mass offshore. Or pardon me, very, <laughs> I got that backwards. The La Nina is cooler water out here in the Pacific, I'm sorry. And then El Nino is warmer water, so La Nina is cooler water. And then this is the, um, the warm water, the heat wave we're seeing off our coast, which has had a huge, huge impact on the um, temperatures, obviously, at the, in San Francisco, as you know, and in the, um, the way you feel, the humidity. So we go to some buoys offshore. I know this is kind of data -y heavy, but it's not going to be really data heavy. It's just more, I kind of want you to get an understanding of this because you got a lot of warm water offshore. And when people see warm water, we think of El Nino's, right? or we think of La Nina's cooler water. Water and weather go hand in hand. As a matter of fact, I have always felt this way, and as a I studied climatology, oceans are, have a high specific heat. Water has a high specific heat. Just means once it gets, it takes, it takes a long time to get it hot, but then it takes a long time to cool it down. Imagine if in December, you had an overnight low at your house of 25 degrees, and it took, the entire day to warm up to 26 or 28 degrees, right? That's what water's like. Water, what, but, but in the morning in December, your temperature goes from 28 degrees to 30 degrees, and it's at 48 degrees by lunchtime. That's the right low specific heat. High specific heat, it just is that first example. Water, once it gets warm, my point being, it doesn't change quickly. So this warmer water is hanging on. Now we have had a little cooler water off the coast the last few days, but that doesn't negate what's happening and happened out further in the Pacific. And it's still quite warm. So here, let's go to a buoy. Let's go to the San Francisco bar. Let's see what we got there. View the buoy data. This I think is 58 degrees. No, it's 61 degree water temperature right now. It, off San Francisco, 61 degrees. That's kind of like Southern California temperatures. And then if we look at 
Let's go to point up uh, past point arena. Yeah, that is point arena. And then we've got let's see what the buoy data is. There's the swell and then the buoy data is 62 degrees off point arena. I've surfed at point arena a few times in my day and water temperature up there in the upper 40s is is not out of the question and it's often just in the mid and low 50s it's 62 degrees so again sea surface temperature is running a solid seven degrees five to seven degrees above average so what we have is and i guess what i'm getting at here is so we have these cold water pools we have this warm water pool offshore and then further south and towards the equator we have this la nina developing they're all going to factor into the weather and you're going to hear different things. It's going to be real wet. It's going to be real dry. Winter's going to be delayed. Um, fire season's going to be prolonged. And in, in, in some aspects, this is true, for sure. But the one thing, the thing that the thing I know will happen is the weather will be erratic. It won't do exactly. It's going to be unusual weather this year because of these water. Now, it may be drier, unusual, wetter, unusual, stronger storms, more rain. But it's going to be a little bit different. You've got climate change. You have warmer atmosphere. When you warm the atmosphere, you allow more moisture to get into that sponge, into the atmosphere. So that's happened, right? Then you bring in this um, this offshore heat wave, this this the high dew point temperatures off the coast. Now you're infusing these early fall weather systems. We already had some rain, right? You're infusing these early fall weather systems with a lot of humidity. Not only from the, the moisture that's already in the air because of climate change, but because of the moisture that's in the air because of the warm oceans. So it's a huge player. It's a huge player. And how oceans go, that's why hurricanes are, you know what a hurricane is? All the hurricane, the, the engine is, the earth is a giant heat engine. Hurricane is in this, it happens around, right, the max heating around August, September, right, hurricane season. It's at the equator. They start at the equator or in those areas where there's very little wind shear to break them up. But it gets so hot down there. This heat builds up because of the sun angle, because of the length of the day, because of, the, because of just how hot it gets. That heat has to go somewhere. And it starts, forms a hurricane, goes north, and disperses. And it's equalizing the temperature, right? Does that make sense? Big hurricane has to form because you can't have too much heat. You, you get too much heat, everything, everything goes out. It just, it, you get, if you didn't have cool air here, you wouldn't have problems. If it was all the same temperature, just get hotter and hotter, and we'd all die. But in this case, we have the, the polar regions, which act as a counterbalance to the heat, and you get this. It's a heat engine, that warm hurricane, those huge hurricanes. When you see a hurricane, that's what they're doing. They're exchanging heat northward. So our storms do that to another, to a, to a lesser extent because they're not as spectacular, but they do. They, they're dispersing temperatures. Um, they're dispersing the cool from the north and the warm from the, and it's, it's mixing and it's equalizing the temperature gradients, the global temperature gradients, or it's trying to. Here is the sea surface temperature. This is starts the first day of um, September. These are in Celsius. The 20 degrees Celsius is about, you know, 70. 20 degrees is pretty warm, isn't it? 20 degrees Celsius, let's double it, so that's 40 plus 32. Seven, let's call it 72 degrees, about 72 degrees. These greens are more like 60s, low 60s. That's our above average temperature right there, right in here. So, and even though you're like, oh, that's not hot, but look at all this heat offshore. There's a lot, there's a lot of heat. And right now, this, is, this was the first where it was a little warmer. You're going to see some of these cooler, lower daytime high sea surface temperatures come in. So here's the, oops, I didn't want that. I went the wrong way. Kind of go this way. So this is the second. I'm just going to toggle through. And you see it's pretty consistent. This is the month of September. And then you see here we are on the fort. I moved up to the 14th. So you can see the cooler air offshore. And that's today. Okay, so this is earlier. And then you'll see it just sort of hovers. This is, was most of our summer. And then you get into the... 13th, 14th, and 15th, there's some cooling. So today's not the best example of this, but we still have very, very high temperatures. The average dew point, so we just talked about the oceans, showed you the sea surface temperatures, talked about the evaporation and all the moisture in the air. And now I'm just going to, what, what the average dew point is. This is, speaks to why it's been so hot and sweaty, humid. The average temperature in San Francisco, dew point temperature is about 57 degrees. The average dew point temperature in San Jose is 54 degrees. The average dew point temperature in, San Francisco, or in Sacramento and Redding is in the mid-50s. Well, the dew points in the Central Valley and around the Bay have been in the low 60s. So that warmer 
water temperature has equated itself to higher dew points, which has incre increased the humidities, which has made things uncomfortable. It has also kept temperatures in the city cooler, milder. It's given us less 100 degree readings these, this, this year. We've had a lot of very, very warm days. And we've had runs of it, but it's interesting. We've had lots of milder weather. You've got even fused more humidity into the mix, in, into the Central Valley as well. This air just is not restricted to the coastline. So you get a little bit of that. And what we can do now, this is, this is the buoy data. So I know it's a lot of numbers, but what we could do, let's go. So here, see my yellow dot? Wave data, temperature, sea temperature. Okay, so there's one, at Tillamook, Oregon, 64 degrees off the coast, that buoy at Tillamook, Oregon. Eel River up by Humboldt County, 60 degrees. Point Arena says it's at 62. Here's the one that I feel must be anomalous. This is the buoy 59, off Cal well off California, calling it 70 degrees, right? What do you do with that? Seven, air temperature, 68 degrees. 61 degrees off the San Francisco buoy. So you see the, and let's see what else we can find here. 65 degrees off the harvest platform down south of Santa Maria. And 67 degrees in, um, well, I don't even know where that one is. That's not, actually, that's not water temperature. But you get the idea. These temperatures are warm. So the temperature right now, we can go to surfline.com. You can see the humidity. You can see the increased dew points because of all that moisture out there. But it's also cool. Right now, the temperature of the water is 63 degrees. Temperature in the air is 56 degrees. It's not 10 degrees, but it's 6, 7 degrees warmer in the ocean than it is on land. That's a big difference. And that's the way it's been a good part of the summer, even though we've already seen some cooling. I showed you that. This is San Francisco's Ocean Beach clearing. The other thing you get, too, is you get a deeper inversion with all this moisture. So you get this deep inversion. We talk about inversions if you watch my weather casts. And when it gets deep like that, it has a tendency to kind of go away. It's still humid as hell right there. But you can't see it because the inversion's pretty, pretty darn deep. It's, and that's... Uh, I don't know today's specific examples, but, and you also notice the other thing you notice, there's not a huge, it's the time of year too, but there's not a huge onshore flow right now. Those wind, the winds aren't howling. So you're not even advecting that much cool as some cooler air. Well, it's even cooler, but you're not really getting any of the typical summer feedback loops, land, sea breeze that we typically get. That has a huge impact on weather right now, San Francisco ocean beach, 60 degrees with 56 degree air temperature. Okay, that doesn't happen. I mean, from a guy who's surfed out there my whole life, it happens. I can remember 82 was, I think the last time I remember the ocean being this warm in inside the bay being this warm was 1982. And that was after a huge um, El, Ni La El Nino. You yeah, know, that was after the big, the big, big El Nino. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So what else I got for you? So I'm making the point. I'm making the point. I'm making the point that there's high moisture on the coast just because there's not fog doesn't mean it's not in a hor incredibly moist. We did check that with dew points and sea surface temperatures. We can take a look at the current dew point right now in Santa Rosa. Now they're cooler, lower than they have been. Dew point is a temperature that when it is reached, you get 100% humidity, fog, rain. Um, they're all, dew points are all pretty low, except San Francisco 64 at the airport. That's muggy. Not as muggy today as yesterday. These are all numbers from today. Do, let's see, dew point, yeah, 41 in Reading. That's much better dew point for them, much better. But I'm, imagine Reading just the other day was at 62. That's big time. That's a big, when you're in the south, 62 degrees dew point, like Atlanta dew point, they'll, they'll get in the low 60s. It's devastating, and you'll hear about it. It's a news story. We're not used to that kind of heat, and that's what we've been noticing this throughout much of this. These are, um, what do we got here, hourlies? I think, oh, this was changes. I was kind of looking at the, dude, this is 24 hour change, which I really like. And I wanted to point out, so these, this STS is San, San, Santa Rosa, San Rafael, Concord, Livermore. It's just their, their station identifier, and identifiers, basically airports. Let's go to Livermore. Livermore right now is 87 degrees. It's eight degrees warmer than it was yesterday. Okay, got it. The dew point is 51 degrees. That's minus six from where it was yesterday. So yesterday, the dew point in Livermore, the Livermore Valley was 57, 58 degrees. That's very high. So we've seen that we're seeing this little bit cooler water offshore impact our dew point temperatures down. So this is 24 hour change. It just shows you the drop. So it's a tr you're trending. You go, oh, it warmed up today. Dew points dropped today. Um, pressure 
dropped a little bit today as well. So just that's a lot of numbers and stuff. And then San Francisco um, continues with very humid weather with they're still in the low 60s. So you're going to hear a lot. You're going to hear a lot about these warm water, this PDO, the cool water, La Nina. It's a cold water PDO this year, Pacific Decadal Oscillation up here in the north. You got the um, ENSO event, the La Nina that's going to be developing in October and maybe into the winter. That's a cool water event as well. So we've got two cool water events. And in between, wedged in there, you've got this warm water off the coast of California. So if you want it, you're going to get predictions all over the place. One of the things I would, I would definitely prepare for is it's going to be wet. When it gets wet, it's going to be wet. Just like the other day, we had some areas in San Jose got what they get on that a half inch, inch of rain and during that one little event. And that was in early September. The patterns are a flux. There's, you're going to hear a lot, and usually in Enzo, La Nina for us means almost nothing at our latitude, right? But you add in the PDO, and you add in that warmer water off the coast, and you kind of go, yeah, well, that's, that's going to change things. So would I make a prediction for this year? No. What I would say is that the weather will be more erratic and a little more unpredictable than we're used to based on these water areas, these areas of high specific um, temperature, a specific, uh, high um, Pacific, specific temperature, right? Specific meaning it's hard to cool down, it's hard to warm up. Oceans drive the weather. They do. They always have. So that's what the hurricane is about, and that's what this is about. Okay, I hope that made sense. I didn't show a lot. I try not to show a lot of graphs, but I just want you to understand higher ocean temperature puts more water in the air. That allows the storms to come in or the fog or... Um, anything to be impacted by that increased moisture. And a weather system, when it comes in right now, like if this system were to come in, which is it's forecast to come in in a few days, if there's a lot of do the high level RH at the surface already, it's going to, instead of dropping a quarter inch, it might drop a half inch, which would help fire danger. Okay, so I didn't answer any questions. I really just made it so you can talk intelligently about, I hope I made it so you can talk intelligently about this with your friends. Like, okay, well, I hear there's a PDO. I hear there's a La Nina, blah, 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 blah. Just don't sweat it. Because really the big story is this heat event offshore and the moisture available to incoming storms, the moisture available for fog, and the moisture that's available for inland valleys, which have stayed on the kind of mild side for this summer. Okay. Thanks for hanging in. I'll do a weather thing tomorrow. See you back here.